goodness, it's only preseason, but I'm hyped he'll fuck. Jimmy G buckets, gets buckets. Oh my goodness, give me the hot sauce, Bill fuck. Give me the hot sauce. What are you doing, Dragic? Did you not get the memo? We are one week away from the NBA trade deadline. The All-Star break follows after that, and the Bulls are still trying to move upwards in the Eastern Conference standings. Welcome into a brand new edition of the Give Me the Hot Sauce podcast. Mark Chanowski, Stacey King, Timmy Whispers all together again in the beautiful Sriracha Studios here in Palatine. We got D, we got Cisco spinning the dials, as my man Chuck Swirsky would say. So what's going on, Stacey? What's what uh, strikes your fancy in the end? Uh, well, we just got back from a nine-day road trip out west. and went to Phoenix, L.A., and Portland. Finished one and three on that trip. Came back home. Uh, flew three, four-hour trip. Got back on Monday, which was my birthday. And uh, Yeah, where's the cake, D? You didn't get a uh, cake? This is, no, these guys. Huh? Can't, yeah, look, at, look, look at the look on his face. Look at, he couldn't even find his keys today, <laughs> we, let alone find a cake. Jeez. <laughs> But but yeah, we so we had you know we came back from a road trip. It's not the way the team wanted. They played really well, uh, twenty point lead up in in Phoenix, Phoenix yeah. and uh, had a chance to end that. And then Kevin Durant worked his magic at the end, hit one of the most unbelievable shots, kind of like Michael in Cleveland, that double clutch shot. Yeah, it was a tough, uh, that was a tough it was a shot. tough shot because uh, if he shoots it, if he doesn't double clutch it, Caruso blocks it, game over. So that was a tough shot, and um, that that really hurt, you know. And I thought you know going to L.A., we were there for five days which was nice. You know, the weather was probably around 60, 65. Um, kind of slept walk against the Lakers a little bit. Just the game that we should have won. Um, very frustrating that game because I, I really expected them, you know, LeBron wasn't supposed to play. And then all of a sudden he's going to play. And he always wants to play against the Bulls. And you see, you know, the game started off, you know, Bulls up one. But the second quarter, look at the second quarter score, 41 to 25. I mean, that's, that's a huge, huge deficit to come back to at halftime. So they they struggled. I don't think the Lakers have won since. They are really no. in the struggle bus right now. Uh, no. In the game coming up tonight, they're going to be on TNT against the Celtics in Boston. Both LeBron and Anthony Davis are sitting out today with injuries. Oh wow! So you know they they lost to the Hawks. They lost to the Nets recently. You know I don't know what's what's going to be going on with the Lakers. I mean LeBron was in doing a post game session the other day, and you could see he was just exasperated, saying, you know, we can beat anybody. Or else anybody could kick our ass, you know. Well, he knows you know what? So I mean, just, just watching them play, you know, just seeing them play when we played them in L.A., you know, LeBron kind of, as great as LeBron is, LeBron kind of hinders the other players' development, you know, because when you look at a kid like D'Angelo Russell, who, who had a good game, had a great game against us, when he was handling the ball and he was the point guard, he was able to flow and able to get his offense and get other, everybody involved. Everybody feels like they touch the ball. When, when LeBron is the point guard, you know, he's not looking to get everyone involved. He's looking for the best situation to score, which that's what you want. But at the same time, when you have guys that need someone to facilitate in the offense to get them a shot, you want them to get that shot. And I think D'Angelo Russell, you know, I think he almost uh, – put that, put that stat sheet back up, Lakers. I don't, I don't, did he have 30? 29. 20, 29 points. Yeah. I mean, he shot 10 of 18, 8 of 13 from the three-point line. LeBron had 25, Davis 20. Those are you expect, those numbers. Yeah, and the Bulls score 132 and lose, which is exactly. something that you don't exactly. want to see. And so, you know, at the end of the day, you know, the Bulls, we, we came back last night. You know, we got we lost to Toronto. Then we had to go fly to, to Charlotte, which is a crazy trip. We go nine days out west, come home for 28 hours, and then jump on a plane to go to Charlotte. And come right game. back. Come right back. <laughs> You know, and it's like, who, what's the, what's the scheduling gods? Is that little monkey in the astronaut suit? Is he making a schedule? Let's make the Bulls go nine days and then come home for a day and then go back out one day. That's cool. So you guys are out west for a week, and on the last day, Adam Amin decides to eat out of oh. a food truck and got food poisoning. Oh, the little fella. Hey, Adam, if you're out there, man, I hope you're feeling better, bro. Like he was really, on the plane coming home, he was really looking bad, you know, and so... I uh, got food poisoning. Listen, listen. I don't. I don't eat out of food trucks. Um, yeah, because you, know, you know you don't know where their hands have been. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So he, you know, he had. You know, I guess he had a food truck uh, uh, breakfast or dinner or something, and uh, got sick the next night. Because I saw him. At, I mean, at the game, he was fine. But the next day is when uh, it all settled in. 
So he was he was out. So he missed two games. You filled in for him. You know, Mark's always ready. You know, he's in the bullpen, always stretching, That's doing right. doing <laughs> yoga, getting ready. You know, anytime doing his the numbers call, yeah, go. He's, he's ready to go, man. They called him short notice. He was on that plane, baby. He was he was there. He was at the United Center, and then he went on the shot with us. So you know, and it's what thirteen games now. Thirteen United games, Jim? yeah. See, thirteen games, America. This guy went from having no zero experience, America. This was this is what I'm trying to tell you. Don't ever quit on your dreams, America. Okay. See, sometimes people say, people say, oh, it never happened. It never happened. Mark Schnauske has had zero experience calling any kind of NBA games, any kind of games whatsoever. He's, he's a media guy. He hosts shows. And then he comes in and he works his way up from doing one or two games, three games a year, two games a year, to 13 games a year. And he is now calling games for the Windy City Bulls, too. So he's getting, he's, 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 he's really worked on his crab. And it's been a pleasure working with you, Mark. I, I don't know if you'll get to do any more this year. Um, but I hope so. I'm just going to send Adam to food trucks all around America. <laughs> <laughs> Whispers, you got any stories about food trucks or uh, food poisoning or anything I, like that? I, I love eating from those things, but yeah. uh, I never have had a problem. You're, always, you're kind of risking. Uh, yeah, McDonald's you know, the, almost killed me once. Botulism. Seriously. Is that right? Put me in the hospital. I haven't had a burger in over 30 years. No, come on. I swear to God. A burger like a burger from McDonald's or a burger in general? No, from McDonald's. Okay. Oh wow! Or Burger King. They got there goes the, there goes that sponsorship. They, they were collateral damage. Yeah, <laughs> there goes that sponsorship <laughs> for Mickey D's. Oh, oh. thanks a lot for yeah, that. We, we way to go, it, Tim. Man. It's funny because they just reached out too. I said, no. "Oh, come way on, to be now. honest, Tim." <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh! <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, what you, Mark? You eat off those food trucks? I've done it a couple of times, but you always yeah. are a little bit nervous, you know, because yeah. you know usually the prices are good, but you don't know the quality of the food you're getting. How about a street vendor, like in a foreign country? No, oh, I haven't yeah, done no. that. Oh, no. I do every time too. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care you, what it is. You strike me as the kind of guy that has an iron stomach. You know? Oh yeah. It's... Anybody who can drink like you has got to have an iron <laughs> well, stomach. Well, that's, that's part of the process. Damn. Hey, Mark, Mark, like anybody can drink like you, like you're an alcoholic. It, it kills everything. So, wow. Yeah, that, that's the safety factor. It's my safety net. Yeah, he can. He can. He can. Yeah, he can put away some. Uh, some alcohol. It's true. Yeah. 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 I'm, yeah. I'm not eating. No, I'm not in a foreign country. Oh hell no. No, no, not doing it. I've seen things in foreign countries that I don't you don't want to talk, you don't want to see. Anytime they let anytime they let birds fly in the kitchen, I mean I'm in Turkey. I'm in a Turkey. <laughs> I'm in Turkey, right? I'm sitting there, I'm at a little cafe just chilling, doo doo doo. All on vacation, just chilling. All of a sudden a dog just walks into the restaurant. Didn't see him again. Bird comes flying in. <laughs> never saw the bird again. It's like, okay. What's going on back there? The, the chef's stew. eyes bulge. Yeah, hey, yeah. I got dinner. Been, been, to, been, stew. been to, menu been, item. Been to China. Been to China. You know they have the little street. You know the street yeah. stuff from China. You never know what you're gonna eat. I went out to a restaurant. You know they told me, hey, you want some? You know, want some sushi? Some, uh, you know, yeah, I like some calamari. I'm thinking it's gonna fry like they're doing here. Yeah. <laughs> they brought a real squid. It was swimming in the soup. <laughs> it was like swim, the, the, the squid. Was like it was like a little bitty, little little baby squid. Yeah. And so it was like a tomato based soup. And he goes, oh, I said, well, where's the calamari? Oh, it's in the bowl. It's holding around in there. So I'm like, okay, like maybe it's maybe it's not the fried one. Maybe it's, you know, the grilled. Yeah. So all of a sudden, I just I just take the spoon and go, all of a sudden, <laughs> America <laughs> started splashing. I was like, oh, hell no. So the, the friends I was visiting in China was like, oh, no, this is very good. This is, you know, yeah, delicacy. Oh, sure, yeah. So they, they pulled out some chopsticks and they just ate it raw. It sucked it like with noodles. <laughs> I was like, okay, I, I, I said, uh, yeah, excuse me. I was in St. Martin. This is really bizarre. We ordered some lobster. They put the lobster on the grill right out of the pot yeah. onto the grill and then took the cleaver to whack it in half. Whacked it in half. One half of it took off. Ran off the grill, was heading down the sidewalk. My daughter screaming. One half of it. <laughs> just kind of kind of leaning to one direction, though, right? Yeah, just, wow. just half took off. It was so bizarre. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to listen. I'll I'll eat fish and I'll eat you know stuff, but I don't want to see it alive right. when you're cooking yeah. it. I don't I don't want to see that. Like I mean I, I've been to like I've been to like Italy and you know then you say yeah you like some fish okay I like some grilled fish blah da 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 they bring the whole fish with the eyes and the head right. yeah, I'm like oh no no, <laughs> no not for me brother not for me not for me. Hey, while you're out in the West Coast, do you? Uh... Touch base with an old friend of yours, Harry Spears. He's going to join us coming up to talk about his career. We're looking forward to that. That's coming up in our next segment. Before we get to that, I want to talk just a little bit more Bulls. Kobe White was sensational in the victory over the Hornets, and, and his ascension this year has been something to see. I know we had a chance to interview him after the game. He was talking uh, about his coach, Johnny Dribbles, too much, who really kind of turned his career around. He was sensational. Well, I'm going to tell you what. 
and America, all the people who wanted Kobe traded. They wanted Kobe traded. He's a bust. Da, 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 da. He can't handle the ball. Can't do this. Can't do that. You need to apologize. Okay? Because I was on the Kobe bandwagon from day one. I said, get his kid some time. Let him develop. Give him, you know, he was, there was a lot of guards in front of him. You know, Lonzo Ball, Caruso. He, and then he came off a shoulder injury. You know, he came off a, a, a torn uh, shoulder uh, rotator cuff or something, and he missed half of the, the start of the season, didn't get any kind of work in the summer, and he was not in the best of shape, and, you know, he never really regained his footing. And now, look at him now. Yeah. He's going to probably win the most improved player if he continues to play the way he's playing. I mean, oh, my goodness. He shoot. We, we, were, we had a stat last night where, you know, because I think sometimes he shoots too far. Like, you know, he's, you know, 39, 40 feet. I'm like, okay. <laughs> All right, I know it's from, you know, I always yell, well, that's from Evansville or whatever, right? <laughs> and we joke. But Kobe is in like the top five in distance shooting. He's ahead of Steph Curry. And Steph Curry is one of those guys that shoot from distance, but he's in the top five and he's shooting close to 40% from that range in, you know, in general. And then from 25 to 30, he's shooting around 42%. So he's one of the best three point shooters in the game. So now anybody saying he's, you know, shooting too far, then you shut up because yeah. he's, he's knocking them shots down. We mentioned at the top, we're one week away from the NBA trade deadline. Uh, our buddy Darnell Mayberry had a report in The Athletic saying that he's talked to executives around the league who believe that the Bulls will not make any major moves because the front office still looks at this as a team that can make the playoffs. You know, that's a debate that fans are having all across Chicagoland, but, you know, the, the reality of it is DeMar DeRozan will be a free agent this summer. Alex Caruso's got one more year on his deal front office has to make a decision on, on which direction the franchise wants to go because nobody associated with the Bulls wants to be in that 500 pit just trying to make the plan. <sighs> Mark, I'm, I'm glad I don't have to make these decisions. Oh, yeah, it's not I mean, easy. It's a tough decision because, you know, you're, you're getting these reports that Lonzo Ball is starting to not, you know, no pain, you know, and you're like, oh, my goodness, well, if, he, if he's not paying now, maybe he's not going to have pain next year and he'll be ready to go. And then you have your point guard back. Kobe is ascended now. You know, he's 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 developed further than we thought. Damar still can score. Uh, Zach still can score. Booch is still here. So, you know, maybe they're thinking, hey, let's bring the band back. You know, but at the same time, you know, and I said this the other day, I said, you know, when you look at the in our conference, just, just the Central Division, you know, Milwaukee and us are the two oldest teams, okay? Uh, Indiana's young, and they've rebuilt, and they've rebuilt quickly. Uh, Detroit is struggling, but they're rebuilding. Cleveland's young. Cleveland's young, and they rebuild. They went out and made trades and got, you know, you're going to take your lumps when you go through a rebuild. You just don't want to be like Detroit where you lose 20 games, or, yeah, you know, yeah. 20, 25 games. You don't want to be that kind of rebuild. But at some point, you have to rebuild. And, you know, I think the Bulls are looking at it like, hey, you know, we we don't have to do it right now. We don't have to gut it completely and take it to the, to the nuts and bolts. We can, you know, pick and choose who we want to keep, who not want to. It's risky. It's risky because, you know, you got to walk year for, for DeMar. And if someone comes up to DeMar and says, hey, we're going to pay you, come to L.A., finish your career in L.A., you know, we're going to pay you $20 million a year. You know, the Bulls are going to have to match it. And, you know, because, I mean, they, they really don't have any choice. So you can just walk. But you don't want to be in that situation. You don't want to, if you can get a first-round pick for somebody, because that's what happened in the Pau Gasol situation. Pau Gasol, they thought they were going to bring Pau Gasol back. Pau was kind of saying, yeah, I'm going to come back, I'm going to come back, I'm going to come back. So they end up staying. And then at the end of the year, he walked and they got nothing for him. You could have got a first-round pick for him. So you got to be careful. I'm glad I'm not in that situation. because I, I, it, It's a tough situation to be in. And you got to ask yourself, if every, everything goes right and everything's healthy and this team, let's say, best-case scenario, Lonzo comes back, everybody's back. What is the expectations for the team? Where do you see this team being? Do you see this team being a, a top four team? Do you see this team, you know, playing in the, you know, six or seven range? You know, what is the expectations? Because if it's not championship, then maybe you should rebuild. Yeah, those are the discussions being held at the offices of the front office and, you know, the coaching staff trying to decide what the best – best direction is to go and we'll be following this story over the next week and we'll see what happens february 8th is the trade deadline it's coming up chicago time be interesting to see what the bulls do one other topic before we get to Ari spears the 
league minimums now for the um, MVP, all the awards. You have to play 65 games to make an all-NBA team. A lot of guys have bonuses in their contract if they make one of those all-NBA teams. Now with Joel Embiid, who aggravated a knee injury the other day where uh, Kaminga fell on top of him going for a loose ball, he could be out for another week or so, and he'll be disqualified for MVP consideration because he, he probably would have ran away with it with the numbers he's putting up. Well, it was just a matter, matter of time before he got hurt or hurt somebody because we've always, you know, we talk about it when we played him. This is a guy that, that doesn't know how to fall. Like he dives on the floor. He takes people's knees out. Uh, even if you watch that fall against Golden State, he initiated that whole that whole bowling ball uh, environment there. He dives on the floor, takes someone out, then someone falls on top of him. Yeah. So you just knew that was going to happen sooner or later. But, you know, you don't want anybody to get hurt. Um, they're going to have to think about how to mend that because it's one thing if you're sitting out games and you're healthy. And you're for load game, management. For yeah. load management. It's another thing when you're legitimately hurt and there's nothing you can do about it because that's the, the injury is actually keeping you out. So they're going to have to mend that a little bit and say, okay, um, we're not going to penalize you if you're actually hurt and you're on the injured list and, you, you know, we actually, you know, can prove that you're hurt. But they're, they're going to have to do something quick. I don't know if they're going to be able to do it this year because they've already – the stuff they've done now is already etched in stone because you already hear the players already complain about it. What do you mean? I got to play 65 games? Yeah, you got to play 65 games. Welcome to the real world. You know, this is your job. Yeah, and Joe Dumars was on uh, NBA Today yesterday saying that he's heard no complaints from anybody. Uh, 65 games is, you know, you can miss 20% of the schedule and still qualify. So he said everybody felt like that was fair. So he doesn't see them changing it at all. No, I mean, that, like I said, the only way we, I think it would change is just, is it based off of, are you basing it off a real injury? Yeah. You know, if, if I got tore my ACL up in a game, am I going to get penalized now because I can't, I didn't play 65 games. I, I didn't set out to get my ACL torn. So am I going to get penalized? I didn't play 65%. I think they're going to have to look at that. I think if you're sitting out games because I don't want to play, then that's a different story. Then you, yeah, you don't, you don't get the bonuses that you have in your contract and uh, they won't be honored. So we'll see what happens with Joel Embiid. I've been checking the phone, seeing if there's an update. There's supposed to be uh, something. Uh, they did MRI to see if he had more serious injuries. You know, in terms of ligament damage to that knee. Yeah, he he ball. just he. I've been telling you, man. He's like a he's like a bad stuntman. You know, he just <laughs> he he just dives on the floor. I mean, if you're watching play, like he dives on the floor and has no regard for the people around him. Right. And he's you know he's like 6'11", 290. So when you're diving into a crowd and people are are looking up at rebounds or looking for the ball and they don't see you and you clip them, you know, and you tear their knee ligament or something, man. I, I I've said this about him all the time. For a big dude, he just doesn't know how to fall. Yeah. He falls like a, a tree in a quiet forest. Hey, did you see the, any of Luca's 73-point game? That boy, bad. Hey, the Atlanta Hawks, it, no defense at all. I mean, he's just walking to the basket and laying listen, it in over and over Listen, again. I'm going to tell you something right now. The, the NBA, the league needs to rethink this, letting these guys just score at will like this. You've you got to bring some kind of defense back. You've got to allow teams to be able to. I, I think, listen, me personally, I think you can stop it. I, th I honestly think you stop, even in today's game, okay? The reason why they score so much is because you're switching all the time. There's a mismatch at every position every single night. As soon as a coach starts to, starts to think outside the box instead of doing what everybody else does, or we have to switch to guard against the three-point shot, guys are still shooting threes, right. and you're switching. So yeah. you're not stopping what you set out to stop. You stop three-point shooting by putting guys and staying on them. Stay on your man. We help when we can help, you know, but we're not going to switch. We're not going to put a seven-footer on a point guard. That's a mismatch all day. And then what happens is the guard beats the big man off the dribble. Then what happens? The, other, the, the defensive team has to scramble and try to help out. And then what happens? They find a shooter in the corner. And then you run out to him and scramble out. They one more extra pass, and the guy's wide open. Yeah, it's been strange to watch the explosion of scoring. I mean, you look back on the, the great Will Chamberlain, he scored 70 or more points, I think, seven times in his career. And now you've got guys, you know, like Luca, Damian Lillard, Donovan Mitchell, you know, smaller guys that are scoring 70 just because, like you mentioned, the three-point shot and nobody really playing any defense. Nobody's playing defense. Guys are walking down the middle of the lane for layups. You know, guys don't want to foul. Guys don't want to challenge people. You know, it's, it's really the game is turning out to be like, you know, an uh, unwatchable product. I mean, if you're going to sit out there and the team's going to score 150 points, there's no defense. It might as well just be an all-star game, basically. Yeah. That's what it looks like. Well, we're going to lighten things up coming up in the next segment. We'll share some laughs with Aries Spears, our special guest, coming up next on Give Me the Hot Sauce.
It is now our pleasure to welcome in a friend of the show, stand-up comedian extraordinaire, star of TV and film, Harry Spears joining us this afternoon. Uh, thanks for joining us on the Give Me the Hot Sauce podcast. What have you been up to since we talked to you last? Um, enjoying Stacey King's hot sauce. Oh, yeah! How about that? Yeah! <laughs> talk, talk to me, boy. Talk to me about it. Go ahead. Ellie, you know what's funny is I, I know the first time around, you sent me the, the barbecue sauce, the hot sauce. And I never really dived into the hot sauce because I was such a I was a I was a crackhead off the barbecue sauce. <laughs> but then I ran out of the barbecue sauce and I got some um some jerk uh uh boneless chicken breath from Whole Foods and I had nothing to put on it. So I said, man, let me try this hot sauce. Man, oh man, oh man. <laughs> That's so a ring endorsement, baby. I, I put the I put the bat signal in the air and told you to meet me on the roof. Like, come oh the yeah, I was in California last week and uh, I was talking to him, and that's the first thing he said, "Hey man, hey, I need some more of that. I need some more of that hot sauce." <laughs> so I got man. on the phone and called Timmy Whispers and said, "Get him some bottles out there ASAP." And he packed it's it up truth, and got it out baby. there. It's the truth. Hey, clip that off, D. We got a commercial ready to roll. <laughs> <laughs> well well again it's great seeing you and like you said like we said you're a friend of the program it's always good to see you on there uh when's your next comedy act when, when's your next when you come to chicago again that's all i need to know when you come Not to chicago I, I was just there we were gone I, I, I was when you didn't come through i was like maybe he's bored of me no no <laughs> we, we 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 probably were out of town because i yeah, no, I, I, yeah I, I would have came yeah i was literally in schomburg uh Maybe two months ago. Yeah. Yeah. Timmy Wisher, did you know about that? No. It comes up on my emails, but didn't get it. Yeah, see, this is this is where I pay him. He's why he's, <laughs> yeah. why he's in the mail room. He needs to be paying attention to these kind of things. No, but we were probably out of town because that was what, November? I, maybe so. Yeah, yeah, because we were out of town in November because I definitely would have went. Talk a little bit about what's going on out here in the comedy world. You know, one of the things that that I really enjoy uh, about comics and going to comedy shows is that, you know, you can leave, you know, you leave all your distress at home, all the negative energy at home, and you want to get a laugh. I remember seeing you when we were talking about COVID and, uh, you know, it was our first time people going out, you know, dealing with COVID, being able to get back out to, you know, uh, to doing regular things. And I remember how that felt and, 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 you know, and now you got situation with this Cat Williams situation coming up and, and it seems like Cat Williams is like kind of all over the place, you know. And I love Cat Williams. I think Cat Williams is a brilliant comedian, an actor. And I love Cat Williams. And and so, but what I'm seeing now, boy, I mean, I, I don't know where he's going with all this. Yeah, I, you know, I I thought, you know, according to the people, when I put out my post in response to it, I was getting called all kind of every negative name under the book because I was going against the grain in terms of what he did. And I thought it was unproductive and unnecessary. And then, you know, a little while later, Dave Chappelle echoed those same sentiments. So I was like, man, if the greatest comedian of our generation is saying what I said before he said it, before I said it, or after I said it, that made me feel good. And to know that people were attacking Dave the same way they attacked me, I'll take that. I'm in good company, man, because he's the greatest. Yeah, I, I just felt like I just felt like with where he, where he's going with it is what is it going to prove? Like, what what are you trying to accomplish by bringing up all this stuff that that's coming up? I know that you know you may have a, his relationship with Steve Harvey may be you know strained. Uh, Cedric the Entertainer. I mean, the joke stealing. Like, I always thought like you know I always thought everybody was original, but till till I start listening to him, I'm thinking, hey, people are not writing their own jokes. People stealing <laughs> jokes. I heard Joe Rogan one time someone stole his joke. I'm like, Joe's not even funny. But <laughs> now I'm just playing Joe. Joe, don't, don't hit me with Taekwondo, baby. Hey, you know, you don't even make Joe. I'm just messing with you, boy. You are funny. Wink, wink. Uh, so, yeah. So, talk a little bit about that. How, how, how rare is it or how often is it that people take jokes from other comedians? You know, I think everybody's influenced by somebody. And, and, when, you, and when you see, you know, when you pay enough attention to that catalog over their, the, the, the years of their career, you can tell where people are influenced by somebody. Uh, and, and, you know, I don't think anything is original truly under the sun because everything has been talked about. It's just what's your point of view on it. Um, and, and, of course, there's a difference between, you know, people having the same premise, which is, I think, unavoidable, but versus verbatim, word for word. 
And as much as Cap was pointing the fingers at Steve and Cedric, you know, he took a joke off one of his most famous specials from J.B. Smooth. Now, I, I, I said this, and I'm basically echoing something Chris Rock said, which, he, which was, every comic is a pastor, and their audience is their congregation. And the congregation is loyal to the pastor. So no matter what you might say to, to put, point the finger at somebody and go, he's a joke thief. He did this. He did that. At the end of the day, that congregation slash audience to that pastor slash comic, they're going to stick with him. They're going to ride with him no matter what. So my whole thing was, what did it change? Did it move the needle in terms of stopping Steve's career, stopping Cedric's career, stopping their ability to make money? Did it put a pause on Kevin Hart's ability to sell out an arena? Did it make his fan base go the other way? No, because they love him. They love them. So they're going to ride with them no matter what. So unless you're doing something to benefit us, you're using your platform and your mouthpiece for the benefit of us. If it doesn't move the needle to benefit us, what is the point? I just didn't understand the point of it. Yeah. You've been doing impressions from a young age. Uh, you have some old ones that are your favorites that you still go back to when you do your stand-up routine? Uh, I don't know that I have any old ones. It's always fun when you do something new. Mm -hmm. That's like a mother giving birth to a new child. So, you know, all the hopes, your potentials and dreams are based on your new child. So anything new is fun for me. I, I, if it's old, I, I know what that's going to bring. Yeah, I saw that you did Jack Nicholson, which seems kind of incongruous. You still do Nicholson? No, I, no, I, I did Jack Nicholson when I first started out, and it wasn't even that great. Yeah. It was, and then at that age, uh, I guess people were enamored by to see a young kid at that age attempting something like that. Because our guy Timmy Whispers is a pretty good Christopher Walken. Why don't you give him a little bit of that? <laughs> oh, my God. Jeez, dragging that out, huh? Yeah. But it doesn't get old, does it, Mark? It's It's <laughs> always fresh and ready to go because... Even at 81, I'm still relevant, which is nice. <laughs> Cadence, perfect. But the voice, I still hear you. Yeah. Well, See, that, that's what I said, too. But I, they, well, they, they call me a hater. <laughs> no, no, of course. That, you know, hater is one of the most overused words in today's moist generation in terms of criticism. You are not allowed to critique and be honest yeah. without being a hater or bitter. Yes, exactly. I grew up in the 80s, man. Come on, man. Toughen yes. up. Yes. That's a, see? See, Tim, you toughen up. I'm, okay. I'm fine. But okay. what I was going to say with that is what's great about Ari's uh, impersonations is the context that you always bring a story into it so the character becomes that, uh, you know, that real element of it. Like when you do Shaq and you talk about, I got to go get mine, my, my 2010 night and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I mean, but, the, but, awesome. but, but the Shaq with the cross eyed though, that's, oh, yeah. that's, <laughs> that's, the, that's the kicker right there. Because I can't get over that because I'm just looking at his eyes. When he, I'm not even listening to the voice. I'm just watching the eyes. I'm like, all right, and you got me looking at Shaq like, I'm looking at Shaq like, is he really cross eyed like that? <laughs> I'm a dominator. That's barbecue chicken. It's a hey, pretty Ricky. I'm fast barbadori. They know what they got to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there it is. Oh, okay. One of my, so, so one of my favorite impressions. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Favorite impressions. It took me a long time to get it because I'm such a fan of the show. And the fact that I couldn't get it was bothering me. But uh before I do it, I just want to make sure I can curse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tony Soprano. Okay, yeah. yeah. Everybody goes out to the fucking bottom bank, Chris for show. Oh my gosh. Uncle Jonah Johnny's fucking shack. Put on a Silvio's for the man I got. Put a fucking gravy. It's fucking perfect. Wow. <laughs> that, that's dead on. Yeah, that's spot on. Yeah. So, you know, anytime you do the impression, I always tell people it's like having an ear for music. Everybody's voice is a tone, an inflection, a rhythm, a cadence. Shaq is real bassy and breathy. So anything is 22 or 10 long enough, Dominic. You get that bass, <laughs> you got it. But Tony Soprano's the wish. When I talk about Janice and Uncle Joe. Fuck a Johnny Shack. So wow. if you get the you got it. Now, how long did it take for you to, to, to really master that voice? Uh, you know, it's funny. There's a guy who was really popular off of um, America's Got Talent. My, I forget his last name, but a guy named Nick. And I had been seeing him do it on his Instagram, and I thought, wow, that's amazing. So I kept, wa I kept watching him 
And finally, I just locked on to what he was doing with the voice. And once I got it, I was proud to say, I do it better than him now. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, what's another one of your favorite one of if you said this is one of my top five voices that I love to do? We know you got Tony Soprano, you got Shaq. When my voice is right, 100% clarity, no issues, uh, Jay-Z. Yeah. I always thought that was your favorite one. That, that's one yeah. of my favorite ones, because you sound, yeah. it's your boy! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I love that. I, love, I thought that was one of your but best ones. Today, this day, and I know I told you, Stacey, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Michael Jordan whore. Yes. To this day, I've been trying to get MJ. And there's certain little nuances that I hear but it, I, I got so much work ahead of me. Yeah, he's got a, he's got a different voice because he like you know he he comes from a different place. <laughs> he comes from a different place, man. Hey, speaking of that, I saw I saw an interview you know because you are a big supporter of MJ and you know we you hear this debate now. LeBron James is you know who's better, who's the goat. Talk a little bit about your feelings about who you think the goat is, the greatest player of all time, and why. Well, it, it's funny because I'm 48. So people my age and older, we get called old heads. And what kills me about the youth is they speak from a place of ignorance. We speak from a place of knowledge. I saw MJ play from his prime to his retirement. I saw Kobe play from his prime to his retirement. I've seen LeBron from his prime to his eventual retirement. So I'm not coming from a biased position where I'm just like, oh, that was my era, so I'm being biased. No, my eyes don't lie. I know what I've seen. And as great as LeBron is, and he's fantastic, but he ain't fucking with MJ. Just based off the eye test and the skill level and some of the stats and the heart, nah, yo, no. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it's, it's, it's a huge a debate, of, huge debate right now. They're looking at highlights off YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Or they know Michael Jordan is the crying mean for the dude that sells sneakers. I watched them play. Yeah. His whole career. I know the difference. Yeah, that that's a that's a big debate right now. And you know, you have, you know, it's it's almost like, you know, what have you done for me lately? You know, guys are, you know, only seeing what they see now in today's game and not like I had a discussion today about Larry Bird. You know, a guy was like, "Oh, Larry Bird would get killed in this league." I'm like, "Are you out of your mind?" <laughs> Are That's you serious? Insane. insane. Uh, Larry Bird would destroy Larry Bird in his prime before back injury would destroy these guys. Would destroy these guys. I mean, they're, they're, I mean, six nine can shoot, could pass, could post up, could do, could guard anybody, could score with his left hand. I, I, I saw where he told Portland. He said, "Hey, you know, guy was talking trash to him." He said, "Look, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. First half, I'm just gonna shoot with my left hand." He got like thirty with his left hand. It's documented. It's on. It's on YouTube. People are like, oh man, I saw that. I, that was remarkable. How many people in this league can shoot with the left hand and get thirty? Right, right. Before before I ask you the question, I'm gonna ask you. Here's what bothers me: how this young generation is, is so dismissive of this stat when they go, "Well, LeBron James has been to the finals oh. this many, and he won this many times, but he's been this many times oh. versus MJ, who hasn't." But MJ is 6 and 0. And I go this. I say this. Fellas, ask yourself a question. And, and, and Stacey, I want you to answer this. And I want your two guys on the left and the right of you to answer this. What would you rather have? A big dick that works sometimes <laughs> four and ten, or an average dick that works all the time six and oh? <laughs> that's, that's a good question. <laughs> you put me on the spot there. <sighs> that's not not a hard question to answer. No, that's not. You know, because like take, I'm going with all works. works. Oh, versus yeah. huge four and ten. Well, you know, you know, I, I can't. I mean, for me, Stacey is talking from experience. You know, right? I'm, right, I'm, you know, I'm already packing, so it works all the time. So I don't know. it's tough for me to ask that question. <laughs> you didn't want to take the L, right? I, no, no. Hey, listen, listen. I'm just saying, man. Hey, listen. No complaints. But it, 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 to you, here's my question to you. And one of the things that bothers me. And when this young generation goes, well, Michael played against truck drivers, oh. ice drivers, plumbers, and janitors. And I'm sitting here going, what are y'all basing that off of? As a guy from that era, how do you feel about that? 
I think it's misinformation. I, I think it's they want to control the narrative to make it look like this this generation's players are are superior. I mean, you you look at the Hall of Famers that are that are in that era. You know, I mean, just going down the line, Olajuwon, you know, the Drexlers of the world, you know, Mitch Richmonds. I mean, you know, Tim Hardaway. Tim Hardaway is Tim Hardaway uh, a plumber? I mean, you know, Reggie uh, Miller. Reggie Miller, uh, you know, Joe Dumars, the, the great Piston team. I mean, the teams, there were much more greater teams than what we see now. You know, you see probably about six teams in this league that you go, okay, these teams are dominant. But during that era, I mean, every team, every every conference had at least six. And they played teams. defense. Physical and they played defense, defense. Physical defense. These guys, with, I'm telling you, I was just talking about this the other day. When they talk about, you know, load management. You know, and we travel the same way they did. We stay in the same kind of hotels that they did. So nothing has changed as far as that is concerned. But what has changed is, is now they've got, you know, we used to have a party of 20 go with us, Aries. Like you have your coaching staff, your players, and you have a string coach. And it'd be like 20 people. Now on the plane, there's like 70 or 80 people. And you don't even know what half the people do. You got, you know, sleep uh, doctors. You got, you know, mental health doctors. You got, you know, uh, foot specialists, massages, masseuses all on plane. And so these guys have reasons and built-in excuses to miss games. When they were looking at, you know, the NBA had to institute a rule. They said, hey, look, you can't be an MVP if you don't play in 65, you know, 65 game more, more games. Okay? They never had to institute a rule like that when these other guys played. And then and you, look, you look at the career games, you know, Michael Jordan in career, his whole career played 78 games a year. And that's not even counting the playoffs when you're playing, you know, in, in the preseason. So you're talking about 115 games a year. That dude probably played in about 112 of those 115 and you games. You guys used to go to small cities, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, yes. and, and yes. Peoria to play and, preseason and, games. And, and the thing about Michael and these guys in that era, they recognize how important it was for the fans who may not get a chance to see them play. So when they go to a city, this you know this might be the first time this family of six gets a chance to see Michael Jordan play, and Michael took that very seriously. He's like he's like, yeah, I'm gonna play the first three quarters, and then he sit out the fourth quarter. But in that preseason game, most guys now don't even show up and play. They're over there eating popcorn, eating hot dogs, you know, having a good old time, and it, and the fans get cheated, just like okay, just like Embiid. You know, Embiid doesn't play against Jokic. You know, he played against him in Philly, got his lick in in Philly, outplayed him there. They go to Denver, he doesn't give. Embiid is 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 uh it doesn't give Jokic his game back and he sits out that game. You know, superstars in in the eighties and nineties they wanted to play against you. They wanted to show you that they were better than you. They didn't they didn't duck the smoke. They was like, let's go, let's get them up, let's see who's the best. Not, not only that, when you guys won, you didn't do ski goggles. You took champagne skeet to the yes, face, right to the eyes, right to the eyes. You took the burn. You took the burn. <laughs> took now the he's burn. Got yeah, and we didn't. We weren't. We weren't putting bags all up in the locker room. Our clothes was getting champagne. Yeah. We didn't care, man. We were trying to win. But the but the thing about this this league is, and I, I hear this every night. Oh, the athletes are this. The athletes are better. Yada yada yada. I, I, they're built differently. They get hurt easier. The guys miss games for like the the, the silliest of injuries. You know, oh, toe spring. He's out six to eight weeks. It's like wow, six to eight weeks. Woo. You guys, you guys in your era. 80s and 90s were built like old Cadillacs with real steel and metal. Yeah. Where if you got a car accident, you could live. These athletes today have all the extras, but it, they're made of fiberglass. Yeah, yeah. That's they, what I, all the kits and all the extras that the car, you know, you get the upgrades, but they're made of fiberglass, man. Yeah, it's it's, it's just a totally different uh, setup this year. Now, listen, I don't want I don't want to be the guy that's like the old guy, get off my yard, you know, get off my yard. You don't have guy. to be. I'm that motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I, I, I get, you have these heated discussions with people, you know, and then, you know, we have guys who, who were, you know, trainers in that era and, and they're, they're trainers in this era now. And we have some interesting discussions. Like guys don't even practice. Teams don't even practice anymore. You know, and you look at a team when they come out and you want to know, you know, like why they look so tired because they don't practice. We practice every single day. We didn't care if we had three games in four nights. We was practicing and, and we were prepared every single time we stepped on the court. And you just don't see that anymore. Right. Hey, for those people who are just listening to the uh, audio version of the podcast, uh, Aries is rocking a New York Yankees hat, uh, giving off that New York vibe. You were you're born in Chicago, moved to New York as a toddler, uh, then we're in New Jersey. Now you're on the West Coast. How has that affected your fandom? Where does your loyalties lie in, in terms of teams you root for? I don't really have any teams I root for. My guy has always been Michael Jordan. Yeah. Uh, 
But, you know, unless he comes back to the Chicago Bulls, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a wanderer. You know, I, I, I don't. <laughs> You know, when, 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 uh, you know, once upon a time ago, cause I'm friends with Shaq, when Shaq, t- Shaq went from LA to Miami, I became a Miami Heat fan cause of Shaq and, and I love Dwayne Wade. But, at, but then after that, I just, I, I, I didn't have anybody. That's interesting. Go ahead, Whisper. Give me a question. Yeah, Whisper, what do you got? What do you got? No, I, was, I was still thinking about that debate thing that I, I was looking for here. I created a PowerPoint. It got so bad. So when I'm talking to other business people, and they're younger, just like I was just saying, it's that younger group. Oh, no, no, it's, it's LeBron. So I bring up this PowerPoint, and then they, they have to shut up. Because it actually statistically shows it's not actually uh, LeBron is number two. It's without a doubt Kobe. Yeah. It's a, it's, I'll, I'll send it to you. You'll like it. Well, Kobe gets left off. I, I don't understand how Kobe gets left off. Like, he just didn't, his, know, his it's, career it's just crazy. didn't exist. I mean, I, I would put him right up there, you know, right up there as one of the top players of all time. One yeah, my my list is one, two, three: MJ, Kobe, LeBron. That's how it should that's be. That's mine. That's mine too. Yeah. And I listen, and I like LeBron. But listen, I, I will say this about LeBron James: like I'm not a LeBron hater. LeBron still shows up and plays every night. Okay, he he doesn't miss games. You know, he, he he's you know he's playing you know 75 plus games. You know, he comes out there and he plays hurt. I, I get all that. He did the flopping. I'm not a big fan of the flopping because he's too big and too strong to be flopping like that. You didn't see MJ and those guys flop like that. But but he does show up and play. He's the one superstar in this league, uh, you know, gets paid money because there's levels to this. You know, there's guys who make LeBron money, but are not, you know, they don't take the game as serious as LeBron. You know, everybody wants to be the man, but nobody wants the responsibility. And we, we were talking about this last night. This league is based off of on some of these kids. They want the NBA lifestyle. They want the NBA, you know, the money, the materialistic things, the girls and all that, but they don't want that NBA work ethic that's, that separates you. And there's levels to this. That's why the superstar players are so dominant compared to everyone else. You know, these guys like Ben Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons, I mean, when is he going to – I think he just came back last yeah, night. Back. But he's content sitting on the sideline, just chilling. Like, that, I mean, where's the, where's the pride at? Like, I mean, I got to get out there. I got to earn my money, whatever. He's playing that's in Brooklyn. Lit- Side bitches eat well too. <laughs> <laughs> I just emailed it to you, Ari, so you'll have that PowerPoint. It'll be backed up now. Okay. Yeah, it, it's just, it's just it's just a different league, and you know, for a person who's played in it, you know, it's just and you see some of these things, and it's like, wow, man, like I, I know we wouldn't have missed no games because of that. You know, we would have we would have played. I mean, we had the fewest games missed in our championship years. You know, we took pride in that. It was a pride thing trying to play eighty two games. That was a badge of honor. If you got eighty two games in. That was a badge of honor, you know, and, and guys don't so, have that now. So let me ask you another question. Uh, the Golden State Warriors with Kevin Durant, seven-game series against the Bulls with Rodman. Who wins? Bulls. Easily. Oh. Bulls. And the reason why I say this, because I get into arguments about this too, Harry. The reason why I say this is, is because you're not going to be able to hide Steph Curry defensively, not against, not against the Bulls. The Bulls, first of all, you're going to trot out six foot six Ron Harper. 6'6", six, six, Michael Jordan at the two guard spots. So right there, you got two big guards. Then you got Scotty at 6'7". Then you're going to throw Dennis Rodman out there. And then you're going to throw Luke Longley, who's a big rim protector, big guy. Who, who's going to guard him? Even though he's not even a scorer, he's probably the fourth or fifth scoring option on that team. Who on that team can stop him? You got Kukos right. off the bench. And you got Kukos yeah. coming off the bench. You got Steve Kerr coming off the bench in his prime. Who, who's going to stop those? And then... The first thing the Bulls are going to do is run a triangle and run Steph Curry right into the post all night long. Whether it be Harper, whether it be MJ, he getting posted up. You know, it's funny. I did Byron Scott's podcast. And I said to him, honestly, man, I don't see that Warriors team beating the Detroit Piston Bad Boys, the Kobe Shaq Lakers, the uh, Bird Mikhail Parrish no. Celtics, the 90s Orlando Magic. See them beating a lot of the teams on the no. on the East Elite. No, and and when you talk about a team like that, you know, even though they won, you know, all those games, you know, the first thing you ask is, is how would they do against other teams? How would they stack up against other great teams of different eras? And you know, I I, I don't I think they struggle. I think they struggle against you know Magic Johnson and Kareem because right. first of all, first of all, if you got a dominant center, you got a center on your team, you're they're going to be in trouble anyway. Because this league doesn't play with centers, and centers are not utilized like they were 
in the 80s and 90s where they ran offenses through the big guy. They posted the big guy up when they had mismatches. Um, you know, I mean, again, look at Magic Johnson. Who's going to guard Magic Johnson? You going to put Draymond Green on Magic Johnson? Come on, right. man. Come on now. Come on now. Well, well hey. so as Dennis Rodman, how would you uh, explain not being the bad boys or the Bulls? Uh, <laughs> as bad, oh my god as bad as i want to do this uh i don't know i don't know if my voice is up to par right now i didn't even know you were gonna pull that out of the See, closet that's, that's what he does right there low blow uh phil, phil was different man phil, 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 first of all phil, phil and I, we, we were great friends uh, he asked me that i want to play great michael jordan the greatest kind of pivot that's why i said i don't give a damn I don't care. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> it was just I was special, man. Uh, and the way that they get with, with Detroit and, 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 and Chicago Bulls. <laughs> it sounds <was good. laughs> just oh like him. It sounds just like him. Oh, my gosh. So, uh, so, so here's a question for you. Like, okay, so, uh, you know, when you look at this situation where, you know, you have uh, Larsa Pippen and, and Marcus Jordan, what, what do you think about that scenario? You know, I, I didn't understand. I didn't understand where Pippen's anger and bitterness was coming from, because when you looked at the last dance, Michael gave him credit. Michael said, "Hey, I couldn't have won without Scotty." Anytime you say my name, you got to say Scotty. He was my best teammate ever, so I didn't understand where this came from. Yeah. And at the end of the day, unless the last dance is lying, nobody forced Scotty to sit out that game. Where you know the play was drawn up for Kukoc. coach. Nobody forced Scotty to sign that contract, which was awful. That's all Scotty's doing. So Scotty got to take accountability for Scotty. Yeah, I, I think you know just because I we we know a little bit about the situation behind the scenes. I, I think more of it has to do with you know how the the video was made, not how it made people look, but the fact that you know that that video. Everybody who's on that video is supposed to get paid. You know, if the NBA is. If the NBA is running that, everybody's getting paid. They're getting residuals off that. And no one got paid. And suppose, I guess, you know, Michael's the only one that got paid because he's the one who got the video and got it from the NBA. So I think that's where a lot of people's uh, anger is coming from, more so than, you know, being painted bad in, in the light. I just think that, you know, that's what, that's what everybody agreed upon when they did this, when they, I guess when they set out to do this back when they were taping it, that they would all benefit from it. And uh, no one's benefited from it, so except you know MJ. So I think that's where that's where Scotty's you know situation lies with that, because he's all in the video. He's all but in if, the video. But Scotty's financial situation was what it should have been. You mean to tell me that the last dance is your bread and butter? No, no. But you know you got to see what they say. Okay, let me ask you: If you you know you 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 know you're doing Jerry Maguire, and they say they still keep showing that movie over and over and over. And even though you're in it, you ain't getting nothing from that. You know, it's Tom Cruise and Cuba Gooding Jr. The only Which getting that. I haven't. Really? They ain't showed me the money. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't get, even though you were in the movie, you don't get anything off that? In, in the beginning, I got a little bit. Now, nothing. Wow. And that's part of what the writer's strike was about. Listen, Hollywood fucks you like a pimp. Wow. Yeah. I did not know that. I thought you. I thought as long as they played it, you got re your residuals off that. No sir. No sir. Wow, that's terrible. But you know, um, listen. I'm not about to wage war with Tom Cruise because <laughs> <laughs> it ain't his fault. You know, it, 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 it's it's higher up the chain. Um, I, you know, I just hate to see them two beef because you know. Without question, arguably the greatest duo in sports history, next to a Magic and a Kareem, you know, or a Kobe and a Shaq. Um, and I don't know how much blame Michael is supposed to take from this. But now here's where I got to put you on the spot, Stacey. Okay. Tell me the truth, man. Is Michael an asshole or is he cool? Because I <laughs> stories, man, and I want to believe my hero is cool. <laughs> let, me, let me let me just let me just say this let me just say this Aries. you have to like you have to have a strong personality to deal with mj you know what i'm saying because mj will break you if you if you if he 
And, and I give him credit because I understand where he's coming from because he wants to make sure the guy next to him in the foxhole is as strong has a strong mentality as he does. So if if if, if you're watching my back in the foxhole and you fall asleep and then we get captured, you know I'm gonna be mad at you. You know what I'm saying? So I think the way he comes from is like he wants to make sure you you believe and you you're thinking the same way he does. And if you don't, then he's gonna get you up out of here. Okay. But I will say but this. Yeah. I will say this. MJ knows. Who he can, who he can punk, and who he can't punk. Let's just put it that way. Well, well, but, 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 in all fairness, you're coming from a sportsman. I played with him. Yeah, I know standpoint. Yeah. I'm saying me, and I, if I was a, if I were to see him in public, then I go up to him and be like, "Yo, Mike, I'm a fan, love, or would he shit on me?" Man, he might have security, Rodney King, you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he might. If you were like, he didn't like you weren't a comedian and he'd never seen you before. Um, it all depends on his mood, you know. I mean, it all depends on his mood. I mean, think about it. He you, wouldn't like, talk, he wouldn't talk to them, but you, you have mood. Every all of us have moods. There's sometimes you want to talk to people, some days you don't want to talk to people. It's no different with him, but I will say this he, he's difficult to play with. He's there, he could be an asshole. He can't like you, you want to fight him, you know, you want to fight him. Um, you know, because he he pushes buttons, man. He pushed buttons on certain guys, and you know he picked on certain guys. You know, certain guys he picked on that you know couldn't do nothing. I mean, I've seen him punch people. You know, and I'm like, whoa. And then you know, and then you sit there and go, wow, why did you let him do that? You know, and then the person will say, well, they'll trade me. I'm like, Shh, he got his ass beat. He punched me like that. I'm not letting right. that slide. That's I mean, right. but but a person knows. A person knows because we all come from you know that side of the track. You know, what I'm saying when we but we, we're used to getting them up. We used to fight. So this ain't no big deal to me. I don't care who you are. You ain't going to punk me like that. So we right. be fighting every day. So, you know, until I get my lick back, you know, somebody break it up, you hit me and they break it up. Oh, it ain't over. We gonna, we still going to be fighting right. every day until I get my revenge. So I feel like it's over. Unless but, it's a one-armed girl. Oh, my God. This guy here, man. <laughs> Listen, we're trying to forget that. That's, that scars my life right now. So he, what he's talking about, I got jumped by a one-armed girl when I was a little boy, when I was like in kindergarten. Yeah, one on girl. Because I was told, my parents told me never to hit a girl. And I beat up her brother, who was the same age as me in kindergarten. I beat him up. She caught me on a Saturday. She, she caught me lacking going to the playground, her and her little, little crew. Her and, crew. Uh, yeah, she had a crew. <laughs> but they all had arms, though. They, they had both arms. They, she only had one arm. They were called so, fugitives. So, yeah, they, so they, were, they jumped out of the tree areas. And so they, she asked me a question. She said, hey, did you beat my brother up? And I said, yeah, I did. I stood 10 toes down. Yeah, I did. And she goes, why did you beat him up? I said, because he hit me with a block. And she said, oh, really? And I go, yeah, hit me the block. She said, well, you know what I'm going to do to you? And I said, what? She said, I'm going to hit you. And I said, well, let's go. And so somebody pushed me from behind. So I turned to fight this dude. And it's the one-armed girl just grabbed my afro, slammed me to the ground, and just got to beat me with one arm. It was a, it was a sight, too, man. It was a sight. I've never <laughs> seen nobody hit that hard with one arm. It was, <laughs> woo, woo, shit. It's, it's, That's left some scars. You can feel yeah, that washing coming through. But you know what, though? <laughs> my brother, I had an older, my older brother, who's a legend street fighter in my neighborhood. He was playing football up there with his, with his boys. And I was able to escape and run to get him and get back up. And so my brother, they, they scattered off and went away. My brother said, don't worry about it. I'm going to walk you to school Monday. We're going to get your licks back. So he, he was in junior high at the time. So he skipped junior high. Him and his boys, they walked me to school, and he lined up all the kids who jumped me. And he said, are these all the kids? I'm like, yep. And so I got to get, I got to punch as hard as I could, each one of them. He, he, he said, and he told him, he said, if you move, I'm going to beat your ass. And then they just sat there. And so I got a lick on like six kids. Pop, pop, right in the face. Pop. And then the one-armed girl, she was looking at me like, I don't care who your brother is. You hit me, we're going to get it again. And she caught her. She caught her. I had to hit her, though. I had to hit her. I had to get my lick back, man. So that was the end of that story. But. Yeah, that that's that's a that's one of them old stories, man. I try to forget sometimes, man, because to tell somebody you got beat by a one armed woman, that's I mean, oof. It looks like a made for TV movie, you know. It might be. It might be. <laughs> Ike Turner is in heaven smiling at me. <laughs> <laughs> you a fool, boy. You a fool. Way to bring it back around. Hey, before we let you go, you got any new projects or something that you'd like to get out uh, to your many fans out there? Uh, yeah, I have a podcast called Spears and Steinberg. Uh, Steinberg, I met him. We met him at the Steinberg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, available on all streaming platforms. Um, always tell people, you know, uh, slide into my DMs on Twitter, on Instagram, under Aerie Spears, blue verification check mark, 
because there's some fake pages out there. Um, I'll chop it up with you, send you the links. And always I tell people, uh, listen from the beginning. I know it's we're over 500 episodes, but it's very important in terms of context, characters, callback, jokes. It makes more sense to you the book from the beginning as opposed to starting now. And also check out our YouTube channel, Spearsburg Pod, and hit like and subscribe. That sounds great. That's what we do hey. at Whispers. We always warn people, you got to go back to get the history. <laughs> hey, one of the one of the funniest things that me and Whispers that we, we liked of yours when you did the Bill Cosby, <laughs> the Bill Hosby, oh, the Bill was, Cosby I to, tapes. I was going back to Michael Jackson. No, no. We the Bill playing. Cosby, the Bill Cosby tapes. <laughs> That was oh, hilarious. Yes. Oh, jeez. That tired. was that. Hey, I, I listen to that all the time, dude. Every time I want to laugh, I listen to that. It's one of the funniest things. I did not put the butter in the I, bucket. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Camille's here. Wait a minute. Camille, Camille, Camille's here. Gotta go. You gotta put go. Gotta go. Cheese and tomatoes into the boot. From <laughs> black man looks like you're eating pumpernickel. You see. <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, I, hey, hey, audience! If you've not heard, you gotta hear the, you gotta hear the tapes, the Bill, the Bill Cosby tapes, man. Oh my God, it's hilarious, man! It is that's one of my funniest things I like listening to, man. I thought you were going to do Michael you. Jackson, though. When was the last time you did that? Ari's the. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's 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 been a long minute, man. It's been a long minute. <laughs> back out of the closet. <laughs> that was a classic. Well, he always leaves us laughing. Ari Spears, our guest on the Give Me the Hot Sauce podcast. we got uh, more sauce coming your way. Thanks a lot for joining us, and we look forward to uh, next time you come and visit Chicago. I appreciate you guys, man, so much. Thank you very much. Stacy, number love, brother. Yes, sir. I'll see you soon. You got it, baby. Welcome back to Give Me the Hot Sauce. I want to tell you about one of our great sponsors, our buddy Jeff Bukovic. When it comes to insurance for your auto, home, and business, make sure you contact the guy who treats you like royalty, our friend, nationwide agent Jeff Vukovic. You can reach him at jeffvuk.com. That's jeffvuk.com. He's got the best jingle in the business, sung by our guy, Stacey King. I'm summoning my voice right now, okay? Don't interrupt me while I'm summoning up the golden pipes, oh, okay? I'm sorry. All right, it's like an old engine. I'm trying to get it started. Nationwide is on your side. <laughs> just like uh, Aries Spirits, that you have to have that voice just right. So yes. he's just getting into character. Yes, yeah, yes. It's worth the wait. Oh, okay. whispers. Yeah, see, there's a lot of, you, know what? you know what? Just because Aries Spirits said your, your Christian walking suck, don't get mad at me. <laughs> Okay. I'm fine with it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, buddy. Speaking of Christopher Walken, we should sell some uh, hot sauce. You know, we got the great endorsement from Aries. Apparently, he didn't appreciate (laughs) what I've done in my career. I don't think it has anything to do with whispers. I just don't think he's a fan. But that's all right. He is a fan of the sauce, and that's what matters. And that's why you can get this sauce and spice up your meals like he does with chicken breast. Did you notice how he dwelled on the word breast when he was speaking about how much he enjoyed I thought you were going to go for the jerk chicken line. You want the breast I was adding to that, Mark, but you beat me to it again. (laughs) But we always know where your mind is. Yeah. So Be careful jerking that chicken. Jerking that chicken. (laughs) It's like pulled pork. You know what I mean? Pulling the pork. And so get some for yourself. And spice it up at GimmeTheHotSauce.com, G-I-M-M-E, or at the local Jules. <laughs> you got any codes, uh, special offers going these days? Yeah, it's still there because we got a lot of extra sauce, including Ari's favorite, the barbecue. So use Walk and Q to get yourself a free bottle or Walk and Fire to get 1871 for free with any order. You don't have to get like two bottles, just one and get another free one with it. Well, the pork, jerk chicken. Yeah, you jerking, <laughs> pulling, whatever you're doing in the kitchen, add some sauce to it. <laughs> I thought of a line, but I'm just gonna let it go. Yeah, let it go. All Mark. right, all right. Yeah, let's yeah. talk. Let's talk some football. What do you think about the play? I was kind of disappointed by the conference championship games. I was rooting for the Lions, and they they just kind of oh, like just like that. Detroit, yeah. man, just like whispers, just like oh, whispers, shit. just like Detroit. Just oh my god. Oh, let me tell you something, man. Let me tell you something. First of all. You jump out, you play a great first half. Played up about the best first half you yeah. play, you're, you know, against a team that everybody thought you were going to lose to anyway, okay? Got them on the ropes. Got them on the ropes. Standing eight count. They're wobbling, okay? You come out in the second half, go conservative. 
You let them, you know, 49ers get the ball at halftime. After halftime, you give up chunk plays to them, 10, 15, 20 yards. Their confidence is rolling now. They score. Oh, you come back when they fumbled. Oh, they just, they, they just imploded, man. Well, they won an interception by the former bear, Kendall Vildor. It bounced off his face yeah. mask. and they He's a former the bear? One. Yeah. That's the reason why he's a former bear. Wow. Bounced off his face mask, and the dude caught the ball. When have you ever seen a play like that? Only with the Bears. Wow. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, listen. I wanted him to win so bad, man, because you know what? Detroit needed a yeah, defense for did. the city, yeah. man. They needed that, man. I mean, if anybody needed a, a, a win to get to the Super Bowl, it's them. You know, uh, they were so excited that they got to the playoffs this year, you know, and and our friend Kendra Luss was, like, talking trash, you know, and, and you know, te- you know, texting me saying, oh, we're going to win and da-da-da. Yeah, okay. Well, they should have won the game. They're up yeah. 24 to 7 at halftime. Got There's conservative. No got conservative. They heard George Kittle trash talking. You heard what he said, right? What did he say? Uh, to the stands and then to some of the players on the field. Yeah, you got us, but we're coming back. And uh, they did. Yeah. That's too bad. I, a lot of people talking about Dan Campbell not kicking the field goal. Oh, but, Dan you know, Gamble. Yeah, but that's what the he's done all Campbells. year. And the he, fighting Campbells. He's gained a lot of fans because of being so aggressive, but it kind but of hit him in the ass. But here's the deal, though. That's okay during the regular season. But when you're playing against one of the best teams in the NFC, get the points. Take the points. Let your defense get back out there. Be aggressive. I don't understand why teams who get these big leads and they're playing, you know, you know, you know, carefree, they're not worrying about mistakes, they're just flying to the ball. Then all of a sudden, your defense, who they're pretty good defense. They got a pretty good defense. All of a sudden, they say, we're going to go, we're going to go prevent. Yeah, you know. just giving a big Oh, test. my yeah. God. The first, they ripped off the first three passes, like 10, 15, 20 yards. I'm like, oh, my God. They're going to lose this game. I said, they're going to lose this game. And they're like, no, they're not going to lose this game. Hey, watch. They're the Detroit Lions. It's in and the in, history. In the AFC, the Ravens really laid an egg. I mean, Lamar Jackson, the likely league MVP, he was fantastic during the regular season, but they couldn't make any plays. They had the fumble right on the goal line, and he threw an interception in the end zone. They, they, just like Lamar. <laughs> he took a lot, a lot of heat for that. You know, Let me just say this. Let me just say this. Yeah. That's disappointing, Lamar. This is your moment. This is your moment to quiet the critics. This is the moment to show people that you're a quarterback that can take a team to the Super Bowl, not just a regular season guy, but, you know, the game plan is very simple. I mean, you get Mark Andrews back. You get your tight end back. Zay Flowers was there. I mean, they, they had, you know, Beckham. You had all the weapons. Just couldn't, you know, you couldn't, couldn't find the people to throw the ball to. Like, you just, it just seems like he, his first instinct is to run, you know, and they kept him in the pocket. They did not allow him to get outside. That's one thing I, I will say that the Chiefs did. They had a good game plan against him. They, you know, they were going to send pressure from the outside to keep him on the inside and where their, you know, Chris Jones and their interior linemen could do their job. And they did it. They, they kept him bracketed it up. And they won. So it's going to be the San Francisco the 49ers against the, the Kansas City Chiefs the in the Super Bowl. Patrick Mahomes going for his third the Swifties, Super Bowl. baby. They're, they're not the Kansas City Chiefs. They're the Kansas City Swifties, <laughs> okay? The Swifties are going to Vegas, baby. She's bringing, well, you know how much money she's generated? They say it, like 300 and something million. So anytime you see uh, see her on camera, you got a drink. Is that the way it works, Whispers? If you yeah, have a Super Bowl party? It's only been an average of four times a game, so they better no, ramp she, that she up she for like she, was on, she's not, she was on there a lot more, but I think in the Super Bowl, she'll be on a lot more, too. Yeah, but yeah. She, yeah she's, uh, she's going to be doing a concert in Japan. And flying back, just trying to get there by kickoff. She, she got on the uh, field at the end of the game. Right? She's out, yeah. she, she was out. I mean, listen, the NBA. I mean, the NFL is definitely trying to put her out there. They trying to put. They, they, they trying to with Usher. Yeah, they trying to mix it. They trying. They trying to milk this. They've got a lot of new fans out of it too. People don't give a damn about football. Oh, the Swifties. Yeah. She's got a cult. Yeah, a cult following. Boy, I bet. I bet. Let me say this. Travis Kelsey better not do it in any mess this relationship up because he's gonna have the Swifties at his doorstep. That's true. They, yeah. they gonna ban. No telling what they'll do to him. Woo. <laughs> Could be a potential man code violation oh, man in, code in the violation. process. Uh, whispers. Uh, we, were, we haven't done one of these for a long time. You got you got one you want to tell us about? Yeah, it's kind of uh, bizarre. Um, well, I figured if it was your life, it's got to be bizarre. <laughs> so over the past couple of years, I've gotten a couple of anonymous gifts in the mail. Oh, yeah, he told us about that. <laughs> oh, man. And I, I don't know who they're coming from, so if you're out there, go ahead, call me up laughing, whatever your 
sense of They're humor. Probably is. from Christopher Walken. Yeah. It, it could be him. I mean, it's kind of his humor. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I've been sent a dick enlarger oh. and an electric dildo. And how's that working, oh. by the way, for you? <laughs> well, I'm I'm huge now. Which oh is nice. my God. TMI. <laughs> but I haven't used the other device. So you're going wow. for the four and six equation that there is. Uh, yeah, about. yeah, right, yeah. Right. <laughs> no. Well, that, that's that somebody really sent you that? No, it's it's got to be the same person, right? How do you know it's a man that sent it to you? Because Ooh. it's if otherwise it's not funny. <laughs> I'm not serious. What if it was Maureen? As like yeah. a hint. anonymous, like yeah, like hey, you might want to step your game up there, buddy. <laughs> I remember she'd be able to figure out how to send something anonymously. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh. Maureen. He stepped in oh. and out. Oh, well, you know what I mean. Like there's could, a man code I violation. I can't even track this stuff. Like I'm trying to figure it out, and yeah. there's no. Uh, both of them were for an Amazon fulfillment facility, so not from Amazon. But then the tracking just stops. There's no origin, address, anything. So someone knows what they're doing, and it's it's kind of funny. But at the same time, yeah. like, who is this? I'm waiting for the phone call, or someone starts laughing. So at this point, I'm just calling it a man code violation. Yeah, that's that's a, yeah, yeah. That's what your wife said. Yeah, let's not talk about some of the gifts you received. Now listen, listen. <laughs> you don't need to know what I say. No, I get. I I've had a couple of man code violations. All right. Yeah. Um, one of my big man code violations, like, I'm listen, I'm I'm not a touchy feely guy. Like, you know, I give you dap, you know, elbow, you know. I'm not much on the like the hugging and Huggers, kissing yeah. and that kind of stuff, you know. I, so after the game <laughs> <laughs> Okay, take your hands off me. Thirty one so, years of so, abuse. So yeah, yeah. So after the game, after the game and like dude I probably hadn't seen in like, you know, five years, you know. Comes down, you know, I always do the I sign autographs and take pictures and stuff, right? So he, I tell him to come down. I'm like, just wait right here to the side so I can talk to him after all this is over, right? So I'm over there and, um, you know, I'm signing pictures, taking pictures. And all of a sudden, he's like all up on me. Yeah. Like he's in my space. And, and he's like, uh, he's like, man, I really miss you. And I was like, okay, just sit right here. I'll, I'll do this, right? So he's like rubbing my shoulders. And like, oh, man, you know, rub my back. You know, you rub like your mom would rub your mm -hmm. back. And so finally, I, I said, finally, <laughs> so I said, finally, I go, hey, man, this is a man code violation. He's like, what? Man code violation? What is that? I said, it's a man code violation. Like, can you keep your hands to yourself? <laughs> like, you're making me uncomfortable here. Like, you're rubbing me. You're, you're all up in my ear, talking to me, whispering something. I don't even know what you're whispering because I was so creeped out about it. But I'm still trying to sign autographs and take pictures. So it was very, uh, it was very uncommon for that to happen. So then afterwards, you know, we're sitting down. I'm, you know, I, we get on, you know, I was always sitting in front of the scoreboard, yeah. you know, score yeah. thing. So. We're sitting on, he's sitting next to me on the, at the table and he's like, man, he's like, I'm talking, he's rubbing my leg. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I said, okay, man. Okay. Listen, I got to go. I, I got to go catch a plane. We weren't going anywhere. I just made it up. I got to get, yeah, it was a major violation, man. <laughs> and, I, and I felt, and I'm going to tell you something. And I got in my car. And I felt like I've been violated. Yeah, you've been violated. <laughs> I felt like I've been violated, America. You know, and I'm, listen, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm very secure in myself of who I am as a person. Okay. I am. Okay, that, a lot of stuff doesn't creep me out. But when you start putting hands on people, and rubbing your legs and their back, I'm like, okay, bro. And then, and then the leg rubbing got me though. Yeah, the leg, the leg rubbing got me. Did he say? I also sent some gifts to whispers. <laughs> <laughs> It's a conspiracy. <laughs> yeah. It might be the same guy. Now we know who it is. It's it like Reacher. Been. They're going after everybody on the it show. Might, it might have been. It might have been the same guy, <laughs> next, man. Mark. Yeah, Mark's next. Yeah, Mark. Yeah, Mark. Yeah, he's next. Oh my oh, goodness! My. I, I tell you what, though. I remember when I was in college. You know, when I was in college, you know, I would get Polaroids pictures of like girls, like yeah. you know, seeing like you know, oh boy, like nude pictures or whatever. Polaroid. True detective. And so, yes, yeah, so I used to think. I used to. I used to think that was pretty cool. You know. Until I got to the NBA and I started seeing it in real life, real form. Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh, no. I didn't need the pictures oh, anymore. And, uh, I didn't. Need, is that a miracle? That? That's, 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 is that a violation of anything? I, I would say it is. No, it's not. No, it's not. I did. Oof. Sometimes you know what? It's these days like this. We've been traveling somewhere. I start to slip up and tell all these stories. <laughs> a woman code violation. No, seriously. Like you get like you know when you're a college athlete, people send you pictures like Polaroid and stuff. Put them on your car. You come out to your car. It's on your thing. You're like, oh, okay. A little address, phone that, number. Depends what the picture is. And then when you get to the NBA, Are they from Brett Favre. Like I, Mark, I never thought it was that. I never thought I would see more uh, fun. <laughs> <laughs> More fun in the NBA than I saw in college. Man, it's a different world in the NBA. America. I enjoyed my time. 
So all of you out there, get an NBA career and yeah. see what you can make. Of. You can go to Mitchell Brothers, too. Oh, Enjoy the fringe benefits, oh, the fringe benefits of being benefits. an NBA player. Oh, my God. You know, it's funny. There was, we were coming back from Charlotte yesterday, and uh, our stage manager, Matt Maniscalco, is uh, he's getting close to maybe popping the question and getting married. Yes. So, so Stacy was asking how his relationship was going. <laughs> so Matt just innocently asked Stacy, uh, <laughs> how things going for you? And, he, and Stacy went on a 30-minute soliloquy <laughs> about the dangers of relationships. Oh I mean, that was an all-timer. I wish oh. I would have had the camera roll yeah. on that one. See, yeah, see Mark, Mark, Mark was over there quiet. Yeah. And then he said, hey, you, you, know, you just showed you were going to get like a second uh, of answer. He gave you a 30-minute. Uh, uh, we flew over three states by the time <laughs> Stacy was done. Yeah, it was, hey, listen, America, America. I, it's tough out there. It's tough out there. <laughs> it's hard out there for, you know, a single guy. It's hard out there, you know, trying to keep these relationships, you know, floating above, you know, everything, trying to keep everything, everybody happy, trying to keep a happy home. That, that wouldn't really qualify as a man code violation. You were just no. giving us some I'm giving some advice, advice yeah. you know, how yeah. to keep a happy home, how to have your girlfriend or your wife or whatever, you know, just make her happy. Try to do whatever you can to make her happy. Try to. You know, give her flowers, take her out to dinner, do all these kind of things. And so, young you man, be careful. When you do all those things and they still complain, I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> just run. Just run. Just get out of there. Go. Just get out. Hey, before we get out of here, I want to tell you about our friends at Windy City Limousine. Oh, Always the best service. They got Stacy from the airport last night. Hey. Yeah, I'll, I'll, we got some copy for you. Windy City Limousine. I think you know it. Wow. Wow. D, sleep at the wheel. Ah, here we go. Where's that? Oh, Windy City. <laughs> I think you should have that committed to memory by now. <laughs> Windy City Limousine provides championship service. Making a reservation is so easy, it's a slam dunk. Let Windy City break the full court pressure of traffic and get you to your destination in style. And on time, contact them at 847-916-9300 or <laughs> contact them at Windy City Limos. Dot com and ask for Brian Hennigan because because my boy my boy my boy Mike is under the weather right now yeah. so my my other driver Brian he's my bodyguard too you know he's a he's a triple black belt and uh, he's an Olympic wrestler he's got eighteen gold medals so he's my he's my driver now so uh, what are you laughing at Francisco <laughs> you don't believe it okay when he comes in put you in a chokehold and you'll see <laughs> but yeah these are my guys man they take care of me. And uh, Windy City does a great job taking care of me, getting me to the airport or wherever I need to go. Shout out to Windy City. It's the best limousine service out there. And uh, and if you got a, you need a limousine, you need a, a, a you know any kind of sprinter vans or party vans, call Windy City and tell them Stacy sent you. I'm not going to get your discount, but hey, you never know. <laughs> and a shout out to Mike. Get well. Get so well, we'll Mike. Get back behind the wheel. The double mint twins are missing you, baby. <laughs> you know, he's a loyal listener, so I'm sure he's... Uh, Checking out the show today, we want to thank Ari Spears for joining us, treating us with some great impersonations, lots of laughs. That was a lot of fun along the way. And we want some to thank pups. Whispers for his great contributions as always. Thank you. You, you not... only drank half a beer. I think maybe that statement I made. No, no, there. no. There was, there was actually two. The glass was already yeah. full. <laughs> yeah, he brought two in I here. brought in the backup. Yeah, he, he right. brought it in for me. But it wasn't my apple cider and my Guinness, so right. it was like, I didn't uh, want it. I said, no problem, I'll drink it. He drank it. <laughs> yeah. He don't turn nothing down but his collar, America. So next week when we come to you, we'll be uh, right on the verge of the NBA trade deadline. We'll see if the Bulls make any moves and what's going on around the league and get you ready for the Super Bowl matchup between the Chiefs and the 49ers. Until then, Stacy. Nation. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, America. I'm the a little tired right now. The Golden Pie. Hey, drive home safely. BB. Look at this. It's only preseason.